Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to just add a little bit of more, uh, another layer of noise on this um, on this pattern before we sort of got continue to process it. And what we want to do is take advantage of another feature of the for each loop, and that's the ability to manipulate properties based on what iteration we're currently working on. So we can look at each individual brick and apply certain noises and parameters to them in a kind of random uh, or controlled manner. And the way that we do that is we make use of this meta import node. So if you select the for each begin node here and click this create meta import node, what this is going to do, it's going to give us a node that just has a bunch of detail attributes on it. And these detail attributes give us information about the current state of this loop. So it gives us uh, an integer number based on the iteration. So how many times has this loop gone round? So in our case, we've got from primitive zero to primitive 52 up here. So primitive 25 will be somewhere around here. And we can use that um, in lots of different cases. Uh, we'd lots and we'll, we'll sort of make advantage, take advantage of it uh, a lot during this, uh, this series. Um, but what we want to do is we want to shuffle those bricks in and out a little bit, just to give us a little bit of visual interest. So we're going to take uh, attribute wrangle node. Okay. And we're going to process our incoming curve before we start generating any geometry on it. All right. So I'm going to make those connections. I'm going to plug the first input into there. Also, because I know I want to take advantage of this metadata coming from the for loop, I'm going to plug that directly into the next input. So we've got this sort of going on here. Okay. I'm going to put the display flag on it and we're back to looking at just that input curve. And um, what I'm interested in is the points, the normals, uh, and that should be it. Um, in order to shuffle this in and out, we need to take advantage of uh, a little bit of vector maths. Okay, so we've got a point normal. Okay, and if we add in an up vector, we can then calculate the cross product. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so let's just create a new, um, let's have a look. So this is our point here. And this is the normal. That's the normal attribute. If we add an up vector to this point that goes points straight up in the world, okay, we've got two components of a vector there. If we calculate the cross product between these two vectors, what it's going to give us is a new vector that doesn't contain any com any of these two, okay? So it doesn't have anything going up and it doesn't have anything that follows the normal. And what that gives you is something that is perfectly perpendicular to that, okay? Apologies for my terrible drawing. Um, but this is what we're interested in. This cross product of our constructed up vector and normal attribute and we can use this attribute to randomly push our bricks along this axis okay and if we assign a random value to this pushing we'll get that sort of neat looking shuffling effect where the bri some bricks are pushed out some bricks are pushed in again just adding to that visual interest okay so that's the cross product um sounds complicated but you know a little bit of maths is, is super useful to have uh in in your uh, in your toolkit if you're a procedural modeler for for exactly these purposes right so let's get started with that what we're going to do is we're going to establish a new attribute called side all right so v at side okay and this is the attribute we're going to use to drive that and side equals the cross product so the function we need is called cross the attributes that we want to build this because remember you can see here in the usage the cross product requires two vectors vector a and vector b and it will give us back a vector that doesn't contain any of these so the vectors that we're interested in are our normal attribute as you can see here traveling along this direction and the second attribute is we want to construct an up vector. Now, this is kind of a little bit arbitrary. Um, so you, if, for sort of advanced use cases, you might want to look at developing, um, 
generating this in a more procedural way. But at this point, keep things simple, we're just going to hard code it. So we want a vector that points directly up. So x is 0, y is 1, and 0 again. So we got those squiggly braces there that denote um, a, a vector. And then we'll close that bracket and end with a semicolon. All right. So you can't really see what's going on here at the moment. So let's just take a look at um, visualization options. So currently we're, we're visualizing these tails um, for our normal attribute. If you click on this little button here, if you right click, these are your visualizers. Okay. And if we add a visualizer to the scene, so we'll go with a marker. It brings up this menu here. Um, and this is just going to add a reference to that side attribute so we can see what's going on. So we'll give it a label of side. The attribute that we're interested in is that one that we've just created called side. Okay. We don't want it to be displayed as text. We want it to be a vector trail. And we'll just bring the length down a little bit. Okay and then close that. And as you can see now, we've generated that kind of perpendicular um, vector on our points. So we can now push or pull that based on a random value. So let's create that random value. Again, this should be very familiar to you. We've done this already in this series. So we're gonna create a float called randval. And this is going to be a random value. Now the seed, we have to be a bit clever with because in a for each loop, every primitive that we work on is primitive zero. So we can't use primitive number because that'll give us the same random seed every time. But we can make use of that meta import node that we drop down and use the iteration value. Because remember, the iteration value will be different for every time it goes through this loop. Um, so in order to do that, we can use the detail function. Remember the detail attributes are on the meta import node. It's coming on an input one this time because it's plugged into this input, so zero, one, okay. The attribute that we're interested in is called iteration, all right? And the index, well, it's, it's only an integer, so we could just put zero for that, okay? And close that detail. Again, we'll multiply that by just any old random number, doesn't matter. And then we'll subtract it 0 0.5 from that. Okay. And again, I'm going to enclose this in brackets and then multiply that again by a multiply value. So we'll just again call it multi. All right, awesome. So that's generated a random number between 0 and 5, uh, minus 0 0.5 and positive 0 0.5. And then we're going to boost that using this multiply parameter. So I'll just click on this little button. So we've got our multiply. And next, what we need to do is alter the point position of these points based on that information that we've given it. So the attribute we're trying to manipulate is the position. We can add to that our side attribute that we've just built and then multiply that by our newly created rand val. Okay. So once that's set up, uh, let's have a look. We've got our multiplier there set at zero. I'm going to call this brick jitter. Again, this is a parameter that we want to manipulate on our digital assets. So I'll give it that gold color just to keep organized. And then that's another layer of noise processed. So we can take the output of this wrangle, plug it into our copy to points node. And now we're feeding that information through. So when we come down to the bottom, and we'll just turn off all our visualizers just so we've got something nice and clean. So you can see currently we don't have any jitter going on. But if we come back up to our brick jitter and start adding in some, uh, some of that multiply value, you can see we can really go crazy with it. But you know, that's sort of a subtle effect going on there. Just give you a little bit of interest and a bit of noise that will uh, help catch the shadows and things like that. Um, so cool. All right, so let's continue on pressing on. We are going to continue to develop this sort of brick for each loop. Um, currently, everything is super, super neat and super sort of butted up against each other. We want to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of a gap between these where the grout of the brickwork would fit. Um, so let's do that. 
Um, so we'll first thing what we'll do is the width and then we'll take care of the height just to give us a little bit of breathing space between these bricks so we can see the, the grout information that we'll generate uh, further down the line. So the way I'm going to approach that is with a carve node, one of my favorite nodes. Um, and we're going to, um, from our brick jitter, we're going to plug that straight in there and put the display flag on it. Okay. And turn on our point displays and just zoom in to see what this node is doing. Uh, so the carve node selectively carves primitives okay so there you can see when i sort of tweak that it sort of shrinks it down or it's actually sort of removing uh, or shrinking the the uh, the length of that primitive what we want to do is we want to shrink it on both sides so we can turn on the second u and again this is just doing the same thing but from the opposite direction and what we want to do is reference the inverse of this so we can grab that parameter drag it into the second u make a relative channel reference now we don't want it to be a relative channel reference we want it to be the inverse of that so we can say one minus that parameter so now we've got a nice sort of even spread uh, it sort of shrinks from both sides if you like all right so we can set that to something quite small it doesn't need to be um uh, it's quite it doesn't need to be big and we'll call this set um What's a good name? Tweak brick width. And we'll give it that yellow color. Okay, so with that little parameter set in, we can sort of add that into our system by plugging it into the copy to points. Come down to the bottom to see what that gives us. And as you can see, we've generated uh, a, a big gap now between, it's probably too much at this stage. So we'll just come and tone that down a little bit. Uh, but you can see the effect that that's having on our on our brick generator there. So we just want something sort of really, really just little, just so we can see that grout pattern coming through when we get around to making it. Okay, so you can see it's interacting well with our sort of brick jitter uh, and everything should be procedural in, in um, as, as we progress through. Next, what I wanna do on our poly extrude node where we've got that expression, just to give us a little bit of a gap at the top of each bricks, um, I'm just gonna multiply this by say 0.97 see what that looks like and again yeah there you can see that's uh that's just added a little bit maybe a bit more 0.96 maybe yeah so that's just given us a little bit of a gap and we're starting to get like a a, a brick pattern going on and let's just double check that this is all kind of working as we would expect so yeah we're so, sort of still maintaining our brick pattern cool so covered a lot there um sort of lots of different parameters all containing one for each loop um which is you know a really cool way of working in the next couple of videos what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can continue to add randomness and random attributes to our our wall generator but also sort of the main bit of this series is how can we generate that high polygon version of it and start chipping away at these bricks to give them a sort of a more interesting and, and sort of more almost like a hand cut or damaged kind of look to it um so if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Please like and share and subscribe and do all that cool stuff. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. So thanks.